Good evening, ladies and, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to our regular meeting of the Board of Adjustment. The board was created by the city charter here applications for variances from the zoning ordinance requirements and to hear and render decisions on interpretations of the requirements of the zoning ordinance. The board consists of five voting members. It requires four affirmative votes for approval of any variance or interpretation. All cases on the agenda will be heard in the order listed. The order of proceeding for each case shall be as follows. Applicants shall present his case. Persons in favor of the variance shall present their evidence. Persons opposed to the variance shall present their evidence. The applicant shall be given a rebuttal period and then the public hearing will be closed and no further testimony will be accepted. The normal procedure is that the board will discuss and take action on the application. All meetings of the board are open to the public. Anyone in the audience who thinks for any reason will speak before the board tonight, please stand and take the oath. Good Lord. Do you solemnly swear to tell the truth in all matters pertaining to the cases before this board of adjustment? Please say I do. Thank you, please be seated. So the roll call tonight. Um, Gene Ogle. Here. Tim Watkins. Here. John Davies. Here. Robert Jones, that's me here. All right. No, I don't, I, I just, I, I think it says here that, well, maybe, but anyway, it has to, four of our affirmative votes, in other words, all of us have to vote. Okay, the first, the uh, first, um, on the case number 19999-13, and I'm not sure how you pronounce, is it? Sai, and is that Jita? Jita, okay. A variance request to the sign requirements for the property at 2400 South Highway 291. Um, and I guess we could do the um, video first. Yes, um, this applicant wants to add a new uh, 21 square foot sign to existing 59 square foot, 10 and a half foot tall uh, monument sign. The applicant seeks to add Baskin Robbins signage to the side of this freestanding sign. This addition will do two things expand the non conforming sign height and encroach into the setback requirement. So, in short, the applicant requests two variances. Uh, the expanded sign will encroach one and a half feet into the five foot exterior setback. And he needs a variance of two and a half feet for the additional height. So uh, this is the existing sign, as you can see. It right at 10 and a half feet right now, the portion that's there. And we will So we're looking southeast and Looking south down 291, and you can see the Arby's, the shopping center across the road, uh, 291 north, the church property to the north of that, um, the Dunkin' Donuts uh, space right there, and the adjacent Denny's restaurant. And I'll give you another perspective of the sign here. This is looking a little closer. See where it is in the other signage that the, the business already has on its facade and where it is in relation to the, its distance from the, um, the right of way and from uh, a 291 highway. Okay, thank you. Okay, do we have someone here that represents the owner that would care to speak before the board up at the podium? And just give us your name and address, please. This is Sai Jita. My address is 14616 Neiman Road, Overland Park, Kansas, 66221. 
Yeah, bring it. There you go. All right. Okay. So why don't you give us a little information on what you're trying to do there at your uh, business? Can I hand you something? Yeah, sure. Sure you can. Okay, you got all kinds of. Okay, this is the. This is for the. Uh, so my request is to log. So my request is to add um, Baskin Robbins to the existing Duncan space so we can make the project work better than what it is right now. Um, so we are trying to utilize the existing Duncan space, the lobby space, and uh, shuffle a few things and add Baskin to it. So which brings us to the requirement of adding a sign in front of the building so people know there's a Baskin inside. Um, so we looked at the existing monument sign and we are trying to add Baskin onto it. Um, we looked at different options, trying to uh, raise the height of the bar, which is not feasible in terms of cost, in terms of the complexity and things like that. So the simplest and easiest way was to tag on the Baskin Robbins sign onto the front of the sign. So there are two options. We can put a bar in front and hang it on the top, or like on the first picture I gave you, we can just take the Baskin Robbins to the existing Duncan sign. So th there are multiple options for that. Um, when we initially put the Duncan sign, we didn't have the flexibility like the competitors around my store had, because everybody had a pole sign. And we were told they were grandfathered in, so we didn't get approved, approved for a pole sign. Yeah, there are. So we some interference here. Go ahead. So we, so we didn't get approved for a pole sign at that time. Uh, we were only approved for a monument sign. But if you look at the third page on the pages I gave you, you'll see my competitor next door has a Dennis sign, which is a big pole sign. And the last two sheets I handed you shows the view from both the north side and the south side of the sign. Um, it, with, with the parking on both sides of the sign, the visibility of the monument sign completely gets blocked. So whether you raise the sign up or down, that sign will still be blocked with the cars around it. But if you, if you have the Baskin Robbins as we proposed, none of the car parkings would block that visibility. Um, so I, I gave you the pictures sh which shows that any car parking in my space or in the Denny space blocks the visibility because the height is so low. And you can clearly see that the Denny sign has no interference anywhere and anybody can see that sign, but we don't have that luxury. Um, so getting this approved with the Baskin would help us at least from a Baskin side of it because even a car parked in front of the sign would not block the Baskin Robin sign. But uh, if we try to raise the Duncan sign and put a Baskin at the bottom, car, cars parked on either side of the sign would block that visibility. So that's my request to allow this Baskin Robbins to be added on the side rather than at the bottom or at the top because that blocks the visibility that we have right now. And regarding the setback, I'm not sure, but uh, when we had this presented in 2012 for the monument sign, the front setback was seven feet and the back of the sign was 15 feet. Um, so that's what we, we are at right now. And I think, um, so the front line of the sign is seven feet from the property line and the back line of the sign is 15 feet from the property line. And I think those the requirement changes in 2016 after we got the sign in there. So hopefully adding this Baskin Robbins will not impact that setback. Okay. Uh, so what you're saying is you have just the, that's about your only choice as far as where you're gonna put the sign. You can't really put another separate 
Baskin Robbins sign there and you want to use the one that's there, but you can't put it where you have a list of businesses underneath it, right? That's right. So there are multiple reasons for that. One is cost, one is complexity, and one is the visibility. Like in the pictures, any p car parked on either side completely blocks what we put there. If we didn't have those parking spaces, probably that would have been okay. But with so many parking sp spaces on either side of the sign, completely blocks that view. So in other words, you can't, if with the trees you say there and uh, cars, you wouldn't be able to see the sign if they put it down on the ground or whatever. Right. It, where it was, the monument was flat and then you built up from that, okay. Um, well, we, we look, looking at the city's um, uh, comments, um, uh, well, I'm just going to read one, uh, maybe one or two of the uh, determination, they call it, of practical difficulties and, um, and particular hardships. And they, they, they have six what they call criteria or, or items that they, and on one they say the requested variance rise from the conditions. This is what the city uh, answers this particular, it's on all their uh, forms, but number one says, which are unique to the subject property and are not ordinarily found in the same zoning district that are not a result of the owner's intentional action. No monument signs for multi-tenant buildings, and this is from the city uh, staff, advertising in the same sign cabinet or with stacked cabinets are common in this zoning district. The proposed tacked on Mask and Robin sign would not be in keeping with the appearance of the M291 corridor. Um, and then I'm, I'm just gonna go down to number three. It says requiring strict compliance and they just say no. They, they, that's uh, um, one of their, and then they give the reason why. And then on number three, re requiring strict compliance with subject zoning regulation will constitute a practical difficulty for the subject property owner. And then it says, no, that's, this is from the city staff. The applicant could install a new sign advertising the second use in the Dunkin' Donuts space on one new or a stacked cabinet sign within the required exterior setback. Um, so you, what you're saying is you don't have much of a choice as far as what you can do there as far as you don't have anything that you can add on the facade of the buildings that has a that tells the businesses there, and you really can't. The sign that you have there is not really set up to where you can put Baskin Robbins in that same. Right. If I had a pole panel. sign like all of the businesses in that area have, then I would have so much flexibility to add something below it. But since I don't have a pole sign, I have a monument sign. But every competitor in my area has a big pole sign like you can see in the picture. Then his sign is clearly visible from anywhere you see. But we don't have the flexibility, so our only choice is to stick on front instead of trying to stick something below, which we don't have space for. And then down this, I see down the street, or down the highway just next door to you all is Denny's, and they have a big, right, exactly, uh, huge, tall yep. and if you see the Denny's sign, and you don't have the, where you could put anything, you don't have a pole. Right, exactly. And from so the, I don't the picture I took from the Denny's side, you see the truck in front of my sign. The truck belongs to the owner or the manager of the store, and he parks that every day in front of my sign, trying to block my view. So I have no choice. I can't take his truck out of his parking lot. But he blocks my sign every day. And I, so you're, what you're saying is you don't have a whole lot of options. Is that what you're telling me? Right, yeah. The, uh, on the very first part of the front page of the, from the uh, cities uh, on your, your uh, application, it says the, the applicant requests to add a new 21 square foot sign to the existing 59 square foot, 10 by five foot tall monument sign. And then it says the two unit retail structure located at the same as there's 2400 South Highway 291 that the current contains a drive through Dunkin' Donuts and a monument sign that only advertises for Dunkin' Donuts space. The other tenant space has no free signing 
standing sign. So in other words, they don't have any sign at all right now, you're telling right. us. Yeah, we didn't request for that even when we had a tenant there. And then they say here, I'm going to read the, uh, in short, the applicant requests two variances. The expanded sign will encroach 1.5 feet into the five foot exterior setback and a 2.5 foot variance for the sign to be 10.5 feet in height. Um, is this is uh, is it Brian? Are you handling this or is yes? Is the sign there now? Is is that, ten ten foot sign? Right, but you're expanding the legal nonconformity, so you okay. need the variance for the height of the new portion. So in other words, you got a height. Even if you add this on, you still have a you encroach. You're still going to be above the eight foot, right? Right. So you have to get a variance right. for that portion being above the eight foot. This new okay. expanded portion. And it's roughly at the, t at the to the top of the sign right now from the base. Is it ten foot now? Ten and a half. Yes. Ten and a half to the top of it. Yes. Okay. And then this would be. Yeah, but it's ten and a half to the top of the of the Dunkin' Donuts sign. Not yes. The, not the Baskin Robbins sign. Well. Baskin Robbins is going to be. Different. Well, so I mean, it would be. Since they're the same sign. It well, it, it depends if he does this this one that had the. So we can do either which, uh, whichever you are comfortable with. You can do the one in the black and white or the color. Yeah. So, uh, actually, there may be about a foot difference there. You know, you probably don't need the whole ten and a half feet, but but that that would cover your bases. It so definitely will be less than the height of the Duncan sign. Baskin would be below that height. You mean you mean lower a little bit? Is that what you're saying on the on where, where No, the I'm saying on? I'm I'm saying it's probably it's it's overkill probably to to get the variance for ten and a half because he probably he won't make that exactly even with the existing ten and a half. So he's portion not going to he's not going to so go any further high high right. right? Okay, so that wouldn't be a part of the problem. Then the other part is just where it encroaches over on the. Right, that it, that's, that the, the aesthetics, that, the, the, that you have this additional appendage okay. and a pattern that's different than what's, what's along the street. And, and this is an additional encroachment into the right-of-way so or toward the highway. Is it actually in the right-of-way now? It's not I, in I don't mean the right-of-way. But mean it's encroachment the toward the right-of-way. Encroachment towards the right-of-way. The right-of-way is way out. It, so it's not in, in the right-of-way even now? No. So it, it's it's clears the, the right of way is about five feet from the from the edge of the existing sign. So from the base of it, it's about five feet to the actual state highway right of way line. So the property line is about seven feet from the edge of the existing. Yeah, that's right. Seven feet. Yeah, seven, seven feet. So, so the, the so the variance. Yeah, he's correct. So, so it would be the si the size of this is four foot and. Eight inches, or a little less than five feet, right? Right. And then the height is sixty inches, or five feet, right? That's what I read here on. You mean you mean from the ground? You have to your not height. Ground, your height is from, but your height figure is figure from be, the ground, not the height of your high, face. Yeah. Oh, does anybody else have any questions here? I, I this is a uh, a little bit of a. In other words, is he? Are you just trying to, of course, keep your costs down? I understand that, and really, you don't have any room to put in another. Is are you all trying to have them build another monument sign? Is that what we're saying here, or what? I mean, I don't understand that part of it. Or is it can it attach to it? The way we, it is. We, would, we would we would want it either stacked or a new sign cabinet that incorporated both in some manner um, but rather than something that's just an adjunct so you don't want the add-on type feature is that what we're saying the city yeah. doesn't yeah this is a little different what we run across usually we don't and you have the the sign but you can't really do anything with the sign as far as 
making it where he has a cabinet sign where he can add the different businesses there because it's not, it wasn't built that way, right? I mean, um, when it was originally um, came up here, you know, like I said, this is a, th like the report says, this is a two tenant building, although this second um, business is actually part of the same tenant space. So that empty tenant space still doesn't have any signage for itself as part of the, generally, when you have a multi-tenant building, the assumption is your monument sign is going to have different right. different spaces for those multiple tenant spaces mm -hmm. that they can, whoever comes in, moves in and out over time can change their nameplate and add themselves to that, that monument sign. The Baskin Robbins sign, like I showed in the black and white copy in front of you, once we add it on to the Duncan sign, hopefully it won't look like an add-on, but it'll be like one big piece. So there won't be a space in between the Baskin Robbins sign and the Duncan sign. It'll be clubbed together, so it'll be one big piece with an angle on the side. It'd be more like an L shape or whatever you want to call yeah. it, rather than a rather than two pieces. Yeah. Now on the other, I see here where you where the sign, I guess, looking north on the other side of the tree, the the tree that's there. You can't even hardly see the sign there. Exactly, that's my biggest and challenge. And right on now. the other way, going south, you can see it easily there, but not on. You know, if you're coming north and you look there, you really don't see it. Isn't that right? That is right. Yeah. You, you, even on. I'm not very easy anyway. Even if you're going south, right now behind the car on on the back, there's a drive-through sign that's getting blocked right now. So as Brian was recommending, trying to put something below that sign, will even get blocked further. So. One and if you put it lower, it's not. It's going to be even worse as far as seeing it. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, anything we put below that sign, right now there's a drive-through sign that you can't even see in the picture. So anything at, uh, in that area, if you try to put Baskin Robbins, you won't see that sign. So yeah, my challenge from the beginning has always been, I am at a disadvantage compared to all my competitors. They all are, have a pole sign. I never had a pole sign. So so I'm hopefully I'm trying to get at least this one approved, so it will help me bring my evening business up compared to what slow it is right now in the afternoon. Do you all have any other, Jim, or do you have any questions? We're ha we're, well, we're do we have anybody? Well, we're having a discussion when we probably should well, be listening. Yeah, we, ha we have more testimony here. Do, do we have anyone else here that wants to speak on behalf of the, of the applicant? Okay. Your name? Hi, and I'm John Scott. John Scott, okay. I represent Baskin Robbins. Okay. And that was actually my idea to bring that off to the side when I first got there and I was looking at the power lines above, you know, and dealing with Duncan, they're kind of particular about attaching to their signs. And then looking at the setback from the highway, you know, Denny's was probably eight feet farther to the street. I didn't have the property lines or know anything about that. I said, well, they're way out there. We can take four feet or four feet eight, maybe, mm -hmm. and just make a little mini pole sign and just attach it like that. And But <laughs> of those six, like three or four of them shot that down because they wanted everything stacked. Um, I suppose it, it, it could be stacked. We could put one underneath, but it would definitely be blocked. In any car that was parked there, you wouldn't even be able to know there was an ice cream shop there. Uh, and then, of course, there's the power lines up above I was concerned about. They're not directly under it, and I don't know what the distance is you have to be away from it. It looks like they're probably four feet, five feet, something like that, away the whole monument is. Uh, but when this all came about, uh, we've been working on this for about two years. At first, we had to convince Duncan because Sia has been struggling in that place for a while. Okay. So we came to add the, the extra revenue that would okay. help him stay. Sure, okay. That was it. Um, from what you're saying is you, you really don't have too many choices here as far as what Not will work. Not any exposure at all, yeah. And in other yeah. words, in our start over again and your cost is gonna be to build a new sign you're talking about. It's, it's called money. <laughs> it's a lot, yeah. 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 I, we, I should have started with you guys. I didn't realize that I would, you know, run into this 
if we started with you after we got Duncan to say okay, mm -hmm. uh, that was the, the thing before we had and spent the money and had the sign company come out and draw this up. We got the architectural plans. Everything's done, but we should have started with Now, you. is the business in there now? Is the no. basket? But you are. No, hadn't even begun. You haven't even begun yet, no. the renovation and uh, for the for the, right. for the the business in there, but that yeah. that's coming after you. Everything's said but this, and that's what I was saying. I should have started here because right. if the signs, if we got shot down on the signs, there's no reason to do the business. Right. He's just going to spend a bunch of money, and he'll do a little bit, and then in two or three years, he'll shut it down. I mean, that's what I would do if I wasn't doing the numbers. And okay. Just the product itself, being an impulse type food, if we don't have signs, we just fail. I mean, that's people don't just wake up saying, I want ice cream today. You know, they, they see our sign and right. they see an advertisement, so they're just. It has to be there where they can, where the public can see it when they drive by. Yeah. Yeah. Otherwise, they're not going to know it's there, really. They're not going to think about it, yeah. Wow. <laughs> S signage is important for any business that deals Anybody. with the general public. The problem is, if you have a vacant space in that structure right now, and you go and you dogleg that thing on the side, where's the other sign going to go when that new business moves in the other one? Going to dogleg it on the other side? A at some point, it's going to look like a big hodgepodge, you know, something you used to see down around the Ozarks back in the 70s. Um, you know, it it's one of those things that, you know, I know it's it's more financially feasible to do this. The problem is, you when you get into this, if you restructure the cabinet and you do it in a way that's conducive to what you have to deal with, and of course, you know, you'll probably need a variance as far as height a little bit or, or width or whatever. Um, I think it would be you'd be better served in the long run and whoever owns that piece of property that building probably should have thought of that mm -hmm. but you know I know I would have if it would have been one of mine but you know this just you know for some reason this just doesn't seem quite right to me I you know I mean like I said I, I get the the financial end of it I, I I'm with you on that but the the aesthetics of it, it just isn't quite right. And, um, you know, I mean, what, what are the cost differences between doing this and then redoing a new cabinet and doing it right? And Has anybody done, run the numbers on that? Well, I know what a pole sign costs. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, I do know what a pole sign costs, and, yeah, it's... About well, a, a pole sign is a whole different ball game. We're looking, you mean you know, redoing the monument? You'd right. be doing kind yeah. of a monument with the, um, where you have the different. But we, we can't really go any higher though, can we? If we've already maxed you know, I mean, that you're, out. You know, you'd be hard pressed to go too much higher. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, you know, I mean, it's, it's one of those things you're in kind of, you're kind of between the rock and the proverbial hard place. Mm -hmm. And I get it, but it's it's just, you know, I don't know. It's just a weird thing. I, I don't ever recall us ever having anything quite like this. Did you want did, to say uh, something, Brian? Did Did you see the flag mount then off of the? Duncan? Yeah, I saw that picture. Yeah, that was the sign company did that. He just come up with that on his own. I said, I don't. For one, I don't think Duncan's going to allow us to leech onto him there, and uh, well. Well, would some, how would something like that work as far as the structure integri structural integrity yeah, of the Yeah, they had to put steel underneath the it. cabinet itself, mm -hmm. the existing cabinet. Right. So. Did you have a comment? Yeah, um, you, you mentioned things similar to this in the past. I, I think it wasn't for multiple um, businesses. It was for one business, but sort of the same issues that they're bringing up is what you dealt with with um, the the new um, Red Lobster sign that mm -hmm. was on Nolan Road. I remember that you know, one. We don't allow pull signs, of course, anymore south of I-70 on Nolan Road. And, but that monument sign 
You're right. We did what, end what, up going what, up you, quite we, a bit because you, of the U-Haul because, situation. Because the car is parked mm -hmm. on either in, a side of that sign. Right. So, you know. So there is some flexibility as far as height. We just can't I go mean, to the pole. The, 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 the variance request was for height issue and for well sign right. requirements, period. So, I mean, that's that's an option trying to go up and get over the height of the cars enough to where you can see it. Um, Is that something you guys have considered? If you could do it? You mean put it higher? Go up a little higher and, Just and reconfigure your signage to go a little higher and, and then that way parked vehicles would not necessarily cause you grief? Going to the height, we still have to do the stress testing to make sure that what we have works. If not, we have to replace the whole thing because the pole is not too tall enough. Um, uh, because tr trying to redo the whole thing, so that's a variance anyhow. We are going over on the height variance, but trying to tag on to the side, we are trying to keep the height down. It's only going into the um, east side of the building. So I thought that will be more less way or going that way is less variance than going in a totally big height for the height variance so i don't know uh, i'll leave it up to you guys but trying to stack up something at the bottom with so many things that we have to consider the stress testing of the existing sign the cost whether we can use the same thing or we have to redo the whole thing we don't know that yet and that will be so much height and there are power lines going on top of the sign mm -hmm. so that might impact that as well so there will be a lot of changes and a lot of cost involved our whole purpose was to save cost and make some money. Well, um, you know, is there something that you can possibly, what we call, re change it or a little bit and maybe try to make it? I just don't know how you uh, you say you want to go to this to the side where you just I guess you call it on the east side of the sign there. But it just looks, I guess the city's wanting something that looks more where you have the panels or whatever you call it, which you don't have there. You don't have a, so you're kind of limited there, aren't you? That's right. We don't have that option right now. And to the question from Tim about oh my gosh. the tenant space, we had a tenant for the last three, four years, and we specifically told them when they're coming to rent our property that they're not going to get a sign. So that's where we're trying to stick to. Even if we get a new tenant, we won't ask for a sign um, that's the requirement they get a building sign but not a monument sign so that's uh, why we're asking for this sign alone and we don't and we don't want to add another sign on top of it so uh, does Dunkin Donuts uh, would it Dunkin Donuts agree to change their sign <laughs> as long as the the look feel the size are all the same then they won't mind but they still cost right so they will look at my cost numbers and say is this feasible or not feasible? Every, everything boils down to numbers. Well, are, are you are you all leaning toward working on on having them work with staff for a redesign, or are you wanting to? Is it possible it we could do that? It would be my recommendation to request a continuance and then try to work with you. You could probably show him some examples like what we did with the Red Lobster sign and see if something along those lines would work for him. Now, you know, there again, it doesn't mean it's going to, but it can, he can always come back in, in, you know, next month and and if they're, you know, if he doesn't, if you guys can't come to terms and we could go at it then. I, I'll put forth the motion. To continue. To continue. All right, so we, so we have a motion to continue case number 19-999-13, 2400 South Highway 291. I'll second. And we got a second, so we will vote. Um, are we ready here? Gene Ogle? Yes. Tim Watkins? Yes. John Davies? Yes. 
Robert Jones, yes. So we're going to continue it for a month, and maybe you all can maybe come up with something that might, or the city, or you both could live with it. That, to me, that makes more sense for right now. I mean, we're trying to work with you, believe me. We really are. Mm -hmm. But I think maybe a month from now, if you could get something that with your people there, what you could do and where we, because we want you to succeed. Well, given the circumstances, they're not ready to open for business as far as Baskin Robbins yet anyway. And, the, and they're not ready. So you're, you're still probably having, more than 30 days out on that. So. Okay. So. July the 18th. July 18th, yes. So it'll be it'll be next month meeting July the 18th. Si, is that okay? Can you? Yeah, that's fine. And then get with your your prospective new business there next to you, and you all uh, hopefully can find out something with your get with your sign people and see what their thoughts are to make it where it might work better. So how how do you want us to design it? Is is that is that f that be okay? Because we want you to be able to. So, so, so we design it and send it to Brian, and then. And you get with Brian and the and the staff, and get with uh, so Stuart and all about what you all want to, what they would possibly uh, come up with and make it work for not only for you all but also for them. Okay. So if it, if they're okay with it, do we still have to come here or? Yeah, you just you just would be coming back on July the 18th with the same, only you would have a revised plan. Is that, okay. does that make sense? Yeah, that's fine. Yep, sure. Is that okay? Mm -hmm. Okay. Well, we'll just do that. We've already voted on it, so we'll see you next <laughs> July the, the 18th then at the next meeting, okay? That's good. Thank you. Guys. We really appreciate you coming out. Sure, no problem. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, the next case on the agenda tonight is case number 19-999-14, RB Architecture, Engineering, and Construction, a variance request to the setback requirements for the property at 1001 West Highway 24. Yes. And so we'll do the, the uh, video and then we'll have the person speak on behalf of the applicant. Okay, uh, the applicant requests a variance for an external setback um, in order to construct a convenience store uh, closer to the property line and the required setback along the River Boulevard side of the property. Um, there's, a pre the, there's a sewer line and sewer easement on the southwest part of the property that I'll show you momentarily that unless he were to redesign the building or turn it or something or make it smaller, um, he would not be able to, um, pl he, he wouldn't be able to place it on the property because there wouldn't be room given the, that easement on the southwest part of the property. So, um, so in short, um, he needs a, a variance of Eleven feet. So here we're looking at the, um, the south part of the property. The building would sit like approximately right here, and well, actually a little about fifteen feet farther north because there would be a landscape buffer. <laughs> so we're looking south here at. Um, the existing um, fence line. Mm -hmm. yeah, there you can see uh, the rear area of the property um, where the, the existing uh, pumps area and uh, convenience store is located would be mainly the parking lot and the pumps area. And um, if you're familiar with where that the car wash used to be. And that's where. So th that's where we're. Th that's uh, approximately that's where this would. But this would be sitting closer to the road, okay. than than that old car wash building um, had in the past. Okay. 
Oh, and um, you want to go to the uh, we uh, to the north, I guess. We um, reviewed this, and uh, we um, staff sees that he appears to have met all six of the criteria right. in our eyes. Okay. All right. Do we have someone here to represent the the uh, ownership or the applicant? Hi, uh, my name is Riyad Baghdadi. I'm with RB Architecture Engineering, uh, address 10107 West 105th Street, Overland Park, Kansas. Okay. And uh, you all are, that was where the old uh, convenience store was and where they had gas, right? Correct, correct. We're tearing yes. down the, the car wash and we're gonna build a new C store in, in that location. And demolish the existing uh, C store. Okay. Uh, later on. So that's all. Has that all been removed there now, or the, the car wash has been removed? Okay, but the old the canopy the and the C store is still there. Oh, it is, and it's still yeah. going to stay open. Yeah, or? it's gonna. Yeah, it's still open until we build the new one, and then we're gonna move into it after we move into the new store. Oh, I see. So in other words, the then the you would demolish it after you build this new one. Is that what you're Correct. saying? Correct. Okay. And the gas pumps will stay and where the they are. The gas pump will stay. Okay. Yes. Well, I, um, was there anything else that you? Or this is just building a new, your new. No, I mean the, this uh, issue is, is really uh, arises from the sewer line location. You okay. Know, and the property is cutting the property. Okay. Yeah. Well, I, they, one of the well staff comments, they had yes on all of them, so that's. That's kind of nice, but they, real nice. Mm -hmm. The alleged hardship has not been created by any person presently having an interest in the property. That's their number five on their list criteria. Yes, this is true. The applicant is not responsible for the location of the existing sewer eas easement and sewer lines. So, um, and all the six, what we call staff comments criteria have all been met as yeses. So I don't, Sounds good. I don't see any other. <laughs> um, I say yes to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> does anybody else have any questions? I don't know. Anybody we, else got something? Do we have Do we have anybody else here who wants to speak on behalf of the applicant? Okay. Do we have anyone here that's here to is speak against the applicant? Okay. Well, we can close this meeting. I mean, close this case, can't we? This particular close the public public hearing. hearing I mean. Okay. So what do you think, guys? I don't, I don't have any problem with it. No calls to staff. No calls at all so. concerning this. Okay. So do I have a motion that we approve? Um, uh, you want to? Well, I thought you were going to say the case number, but that's okay. I move we approve case number 19999-14, 1001, West 24th Highway. And we have a, you so moved, you, you got a second from Gene, all right. So, we will vote. Um, Gene Ogle. I'll vote yes. Tim Watkins. Yes. Uh, John Davies. Yes. Robert Jones, yes. So. Case number 19-999-14, RB Architecture, Engineering, and Construction has been approved. Thank you. Okay, the next uh, case on the the agenda tonight is uh, case number 19-999-15, James Bullard, a variance request to the minimum lot and flag lot requirements for the property at 1780 North L.C. Smith Road. And we have a, the, the uh, video here. Show.
<laughs> well, it's all country out there. But they, uh, I'm trying to find it on there. There you go. There we go. Um, I got it together here. <laughs> okay. Uh, the applicant here is, um, this is on L.C. Smith Road, 1780 East, or East, North L.C. Smith Road. Applicant requests a variance to plot the northern portion of a earlier um, illegal lot split into two new lots. Uh, the applicant wasn't responsible for the earlier lot split from the southern portion, um, so that property is not part of this application. It's just the current property that's owned by the applicant. Um, with uh, having about 356 feet of frontage, there isn't enough for two lots. Right. Um, and the applicant would like to have two lots along this road. Um, the smaller lot is, is going to have uh, 286 feet of frontage, or that's what the applicant's requesting. So that would leave 70 feet for a, a neck, a corridor, a property that would go back to where the property fans out larger mm -hmm. as well as wraps around uh, mm -hmm. um, the applicant's um, um, southeastern mm -hmm. lot uh, that, will be, that will be three acres. Uh, this other lot, this larger lot that needs the variance would um, have the remainder of that acreage on the property. Um, so the, this lot is about 1,300 feet deep, mm -hmm. but at that neck up by the road, only 70 feet wide, meaning that it is by definition a flag lot mm -hmm. and a lot that doesn't meet the um, um, depth to uh, width ratio of four to one that's required by code. So in essence, the applicant seeing three variances, uh, one for the um, frontage that's less than the 240 required, okay. uh, being only at 70 feet, and the ratio not meeting the four to one, as well as the fact that it is a, a flag lot. Okay, um, let's see, we are looking north up L.C. Smith Road. Okay. Uh, south, okay. So, so it's that's, right that's, this is the neighboring property okay. to the east. Okay. And then um, going back around to the property. Mm -hmm. And it, it's, the, we're at the south end of the property here. So this is the southeast corner okay. of the property in question. Okay. Where the car is down there. Okay. And the road is more toward the, the northeastern corner, uh, toward the, the property that's to the northeast that this one wraps around. Here we go. Is this yours? I get a lot slower than you, so I'm getting And let's see. Okay. Okay, this is from the south end of the property, or, or the north end of the property. This is to the e the neighbors across to the east. This is looking south down L.C. Smith, and this, this is, is the where the driveway would be. That, that's where the This is where the 70 feet is, Okay. right there, where that gravel road is. Okay. There we go. Um, 
um, staff in its review um, says the request meets five of the six above stated hardships in our opinion so okay all right all right so do we have someone here representing the the um, applicant and your name and Jed address. Boffman with Powell CWM 3200 South Route State 91 Building 1 in Independence okay my name is James Bullard, 218 Southwest 20th okay. Terrace, Oak Grove, Missouri. Okay. Well, do you want to go over what you're, you're all trying to do there? And, uh, well, what he's trying to do is take what's existing. Oh, what he's trying to do. Uh, uh, James is the applicant. We are the land surveyor trying to put together the, the variance and the minor, the minor plat in the future if the variance passes. Um, what he wants to do is end up selling or building two lots and two single-family properties, correct? Correct. Um, I am the applicant. I have not purchased the, the property yet. It's dependent upon the approval of the variance. Okay. And essentially, just wanting to create a small single home residence in a three acre lot, and then the larger one would be built on by me also in the future. Okay. All right. Uh, is there anyone else here that cares to speak on behalf of the? Applicant? I don't have any other questions as far as the, you had, you met five of the six. You did on number two, the requested variance will not adversely affect the rights of the adjacent property owners or residents. No, the other properties along the corridor would have to adhere to the frontage lot ratio and flag lot provisions. But we had some others here just recently. I know that we had approved it was 70 foot. It was a, a flag lot that was out in the country, so we, we've done it before. It's not something we've never done. Do we have any opposition? Do we, do we have any opposition here tonight? It's <laughs> so what are you talking about, the whole group? Yes. So do you have a spokesman here? I, mean, I don't think we can have everybody speak. Uh, no, we can, but we're going to take lots of bathroom breaks. Yeah. So give us your name and... My name is Dawn Zacco. I am a resident at 1512 North Elsie Smith Road. That's uh, south of the location. And um, while I welcome new friends and neighbors into the neighborhood and love to have people come out and join our neighborhood, um, in 1996, I believe, it might have been 95, um, I kind of went by some building dates of some other houses that moved in. They were slotting to put a subdivision in out um, to the property adjacent of ours, south of ours. And at the time, I think it was, if I'm recalling correctly, there was like 10 houses on 13 acres. So it was very small amount, clustered in. And the developer at the time um, was rallying the neighborhood to try to pre present this whole opportunity for a wonderful um, subdivision to come in. So there were some that were for it, some that were against it. And um, long story short, the developer was actually... Um, as I found out at a later date, trying to create for the city, I'm going to call it a rural ordinance for the city to have um, opportunity for growth out in the rural to still keep our ambiance that we have or, you know, the country uh, appeal that we have for people that want to live in the country on acreage. And the current code at the time was requiring him to put in, even if he had a five acre plot for a house for this property, so like say he did a division of um, three houses on that property, he would have to have um, curbs in, he would have to have sidewalk in, and he would have to have lights, and I don't know what all, it was a lot of work, a lot of extra dollars for him. Um, so he, in a roundabout way, presented it as a subdivision to, and putting in all these houses. Um, that then created a um, code recommendation, a committee that put forth to this, the um, ordinance variance and ordinance, the, the, the actual ordinance of our, our code in the city chapter, charter, um, a, I think they call it open space. Am I correct? Is that what the code is now? They call it open space. Is that right? There's like residential and 
commercial and open space, I believe is what it's called. That's the rule. I mean, that's what's considered the rural development. And I was very much part of a committee. Um, the late Jake, Jack Gant was also part of it. Um, Dick Davies, who was the developer at the time, was part of it. And we came up with this whole um, development for the rural area where it was so many deep, so many wide, so many acres to present to what the people, what, what people would like to have when we move out to the country. Um, we, I, I know I took um, a lot of time with the neighbors and talked to them individually saying, okay, you know, what's acceptable to you, what's not acceptable? And we went through a lot of trouble, a lot of time, a lot of time of my personal time was spent developing and helping to give a recommendation that would be put forth in the city, um, for the city. So I, while I don't want any subdivisions out there, one of the things that was a big issue to us is if you go to the south end of our properties um, out there at Bunshu and Elsie Smith, one of the things that was not an appealing factor was prior to this code, there were houses that were placed on the property which were on small acreages um, and they were very close together, very clustered. And it, um, it was not appealing to the vast majority of people that lived and, and were out in the area. We like to have space, that's why we moved out to the country. You know, I, it's zoned agricultural. It is a, um, I'm able to have my out livestock if I want to. If I want to put a hog confinement building up there, I should be able to put a hog confinement bu building up there. There's crops on the other side, you know, so we are very rural. You can see by the pictures, it's very rural. And when we allow the variances, as you have, must have done in the, in the past, um, it opens the door. It opens the door to creating an area that is not what we you know what we're what we are looking for as a, a rural community it was annexed um, and it hasn't had sewer development we don't have cable development we don't have a lot of city um, factors in there and so we are rural and I would hope that you would consider the fact that because of that the time and the effort and the work that we did to come up with these ideas we had a reason if you don't live out there, you don't understand it. But we had a reason why we, we created that and what it was created. We went with the, we had um, developers, we had um, architects out there, we had people that were farming people out there, we had Jack Gant, myself. I think there was like seven of us, eight of us on the, the committee that sat together and then each of us went out to the neighborhoods and talked to the people. What do we want this area to be? What do we want it to look like? So while I welcome neighbors, I would appreciate if we would stick with the ordinances that we have in place. Thank you. Do we, do we have anyone else who sure. cares to speak? I'm Dan Hildebrand. My address is 12381 Southeast Guilford Drive, Milwaukee, Oregon. The property that I acquired on North Elsie Smith Road was because it was rural. The property lines um, are contiguous and uh, we share the property line for this variance request. It's 18 and a half acres is what we acquired last year. We didn't move to that part of the city because we wanted neighbors close by. We've got plenty of neighbors, these neighbors right here. We've got 72 signatures on a petition asking for this to be denied. We don't understand how it could meet five of the six criteria. And what we don't understand is why you would approve something when the uh, criteria findings say that all of the following conditions have to be met. We don't mind, and, and what I understand in talking to neighbors, that there's precedent been set in the last few years about requests for subdividing these properties and then being turned down and saying no. So. The intent here is to, um, you know, to maintain the area and these fine people here, plus a lot of others that couldn't show up for health reasons or whatever out of town, are trying to maintain that area. Um, I'm new. We've got another couple here that are new that are building right across the road of 20 acres. The idea is to have a, a, a part of a community that maintains its rural nature. 
Thank you. Mm -hmm. All right. Do we have anyone else that cares to this, this speak that's opposed to this or this um, application applicant? Okay. Not My name is Ron Dankerberg, and I live at 1414 North Elsie Smith Road. And my only question is, is I agree with everything that has been said, but I have one question. Isn't there a zoning ordinance out there that you have to have 10 acres, at least 10 acres, to put septic system in? No. There isn't? No, I it's thought three that's acres what it was. or more. It has to be three acres well, or more. Well, then I was told wrong because that's what they yeah. said all no, that area out there was supposed to be it's 10 It's three acres. acres at, you have to have at least three acres. But 10 acres is not a requirement for to build a house. On a, okay, a that's, all, that's all I want to know because that's what yeah. I heard once. The, the, if it's residential under 300-2, it's a three acre. If it's an open space development, it's a five acre. That's, yeah. that's what it says. That's your word. I don't know what... what they it, it's a standard zoning. It's not an open space. I don't know how... I don't it's know how it's RA. It, it is RA. A standard RA zone. Okay. Okay. Do we have, does the uh, applicant want to sure. speak? Why don't you all come up separately? You don't have to come up together. If you come up and then you can, that would be better. I guess the concern is about this opening a kind of a door uh, to turning, turning this area into a, you know, a small single family. Um, development uh, that is not the intent of the owner or not the intent of the applicant and you already have some non-conforming tracts that do not meet the minimum uh, width or, or lot size in that area I just don't see how this really affects it I mean it there's the concern about a possible uh, future development uh, you don't have sewer there no. uh, so you can't you can't do a single family residents that would be way too much infrastructure for anyone to even consider doing um, our client went through the right went about this the right way and he you know came came to the city you know asked for help asked what he needed to do if he was going to purchase this property and potentially build two single-family homes on it um, so it, I understand the concerns of the of the neighbors it's it's just um, that is not his intent to to ruin this this rural area at all. Yeah. All right. Is it James Bullard? Is that? Or did you want to speak? Or uh, do we have anyone else? That, do, what do we do here? Do we just go ahead and ask there anybody else that's against it, or is that it? Done that. We've done that. So uh, that's that's all we have to listen to. Okay. Okay, all right, that's right, that's what I thought, okay. Yes, yes, hi, I'm Rita Blankenship. I live at 1800 North Elsie Smith Road, directly. Matt. More, okay, north, directly north of the property in question. Okay. And I just want, I know that it, they were saying that only two houses would be built in, on this section of property, but on a day when the family was um, there looking at the property, the son left and my husband and I were on the porch and my husband and I was there, <coughs> excuse me, and I was there and my husband asked him, are you buying the property to the father? And he said, no, but my son put a down payment on it and he wants to put three to five acre lots and that's after he put the down payment on it. And so on the video where the drive is right there, our house is directly next to the fence on the other side. There's, this is a sloping hill down to our, we're at the bottom of the hill. There's, I think, maybe more problems with runoff and water going into the creek that could be contaminated. I mean, it's a possibility, especially if it opens up them putting more than one house 
later on. Maybe not now. Who's to say what he's going to do? But thank you for listening. That's thank you. All thank I'm you for say. coming. Well, we need to decide what we. That that uh, is the end of the public hearing. We're going to close that part of our and decide what we want to do here. Um, Do uh, now you met with the, the applicant met uh, all but one of the and then you know, number two the determination of practical difficulty will not adversely affect the rights of the adjacent property owners or residents. No other properties along the corridor would have to adhere to the frontage lot ratio and flag lot provisions of the code. Um, is this something that I'm just asking you all? Is this something that we we've, we've approved before, isn't it? I mean, are the are the are the city? I should say on other not. I'm not calling these big developments. I mean, just on lot splits. Have you had any others like this particular one here recently, or within? I'm just asking you, uh, Brian, or or Stuart. I mean, we've we've had lot splits in the past that you've granted variances on and there have been ones that have been denied um, it's and remember what you're voting on is about the variances as applied for by the applicant not what he may do in the future mm -hmm. it's what's right. on this form right. that he's applied for okay so remember to focus on mm -hmm. those okay. issues okay well it appears that the city has all but one on <coughs> On the number two, the request for variance. Um, we're not voting on whether they're going to do in 20 years, 10 years, five years. Correct? That's not our. That's not our call here. Uh, Jim, do you have, do you have any? Uh, what do you call? It? We're just talking. Any uh, discussion? discussion now? Well, I would. You know, I can understand these folks' concerns. Um, you know, if it was more of an equitable split of the property, you know, but you're taking a little three-acre chunk and that leaves, what, 15.37. Mm -hmm. you know, so I can understand their concerns on this. The 70-foot part doesn't bother me. So I've seen properties like that where you have an access way or an easement, but I understand their concerns. Um, you know, I also see what he's considering doing here, you know, but it's, it's one of those things, I, you know, I, I understand what, what they're wanting and, and, you know, having had acreage and, and, you know, growing up with the family I've had that's had all kinds of farmland, I can get what they're saying about want, liking being out in the country and enjoying peace and solitude. Uh, you know, nothing against neighbors, but, uh, you know, so, you know, but, I, we're, but we're looking at I something have no, here. I have no questions. I, you know, comments. I think did this you, is, a, did you have any other comments or anything? I mean, questions, no. uh, Gene, what about you, John? No. We're not talking, we're talking here about a, uh, Where we've done this before, and the city says, "Okay, you can do this," but then you got people out there that don't want. And I understand where you all are coming from, but by the same token, you all don't own the land. There is a difference here. I mean, if we went, if we, I'm not trying to be. I'm just saying that a lot of things go on in this this country that people. And your right is to, you can petition, you can do this and that, but. Uh, when you don't own the property, sometimes I wonder if, if, if one person that doesn't own the property or they don't own the property can say, okay, we're not going to let anybody else in here do something with their own land and they meet the criteria of the city. Now, I'm, I'm just speaking from 
for my for myself. I'm not trying to jam anything down anybody's throat, but we're looking at here where they met five of the six items, and only one would be. But I'm not sure that we're going to look at this all the way up and down this L.C. Uh, Smith Road. I just don't know. I mean, I don't. Uh, I can't say what'll be in the future. But uh, anyway, that's. I was, Second. Do I have a second? Uh, yes, you got mine. We have, we have to have second to get so we can talk about it. Yes, I, I second. No. Yes. I'm sorry. We have to. We have to have a second in order to talk about it. So I'll second it. Well, this, we're talking about it before we do that. All right, but anyway, but second. Okay. Um, I don't want to kill it, but I don't know what else to say. Do we do we vote? We have vote to and do it. All right. Okay. We'll vote on the the, uh, the motion and um, God. Um, Gene Ogle. I vote no. Tim Watkins. I vote no. John Davies? No. And Robert Jones, no. Um, so I presume that's the end of, of this particular case number, next case. Sorry. I got too many people out. Oh my Thank you guys. I don't know. You had to do what you had to do. What? Everything's fine. All right. We have too many people here tonight. We can't just. Hmm? Nothing. I'll, I'll talk to you afterwards. Okay. Uh, case number. The next on the agenda is case number. 19-999-16 Beyond the Horizon LLC, a variance request to the lot frontage requirements for property at 20301 East Bunchy Road, and we'll do the video. Yes, uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Beyond the Horizon LLC seeks variances for uh, from the uh, <clears throat> Section uh, 14305 for a minimum lot frontage as the applicant proposed to create a, a uh, property that is on R6 with no street frontage versus the minimum street frontage of 60 feet. Okay, uh, this property is actually surrounded by a, well, it's mostly farm field, it's surrounded by trees on along the road. So I only could get a few. Uh, Shots of the field area. It's not really very good uh, video as far as you're just looking at some trees and uh, fields, much like the previous one. Uh, this is one of the areas that was uh, that's we're looking south into the property from uh, Bunchy Road. This is one of the areas that uh, uh, this is actually probably one of the areas that that's going to be one will be one of the lots. Uh, okay. with street frontage. Now we're looking uh, uh, west down Bunchy Road. That's, I uh, um, can't remember the name of the subdivision right offhand, but we have another video that shows that. Oh, Timber Creek Ranch, that's right. And here we're looking east down uh, Bunchy Road. Up the hill, you mean? Going up the hill? Yeah. That's east. Going up the hill. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay, and we've got another one here said these are all kind of uh, 
and that's the other. Not very explainable because they, they uh, hey, how we, here we go. Here's another field. Again, we're looking south into the property from Bunchy Road. Uh, it's just tree line and some fields that were there have been or are farmed now. Okay. Again, this is the northern part where the lots are that do have street frontage. And, and the lot that doesn't is to the south west of this property. And the applicant has brought in a, uh, a PowerPoint presentation also that he'd like to show. Okay. All right. Um, do we have someone here that I guess is representing the owner or his representative? Well, I guess they, are you talking about the darkened part, the shaded part of the truck thing? I don't no, know. no, the, 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 the darker, the, the little dotted line, the little dash. Yeah. I think that's. You mean it runs through oh, the this creek? Oh, is, this, so is is this is what they call a stream <coughs> channel. I thought it was yeah. saying. I think that maybe that's part of the. That's a stream channel. Maybe, okay, maybe this is part of the floodplain down in here. So that if they build, they're going to have to build up in here. Maybe that's what that is. They, you wouldn't want to build down in here. You don't want to build down in here. It's too yeah, low. Yeah, but cost. if I bought the lot, where's my property line? Well, well it's the, probably going to be the creek. I would say this is the lot, lot line for this lot, too. So you're going to have part of the. And then you, you're building yeah, that one it. <laughs> Cut it right off. Yeah. Uh, well, uh, this. Okay, the lot for this, but then this would pick up and go down like that, I think. Yeah, well, I think sure. so. We'll have to ask. Well, um, okay. good evening. My name's Randall Pratt, P-R-A-T-T, and I'm here as the president of Beyond the Horizon LLC. I apologize. We, I didn't come early enough to try my jump drive with their software. Okay, so it didn't work. Uh, yeah, there's a compatibility issue, I think, with versions okay. of PowerPoint. So, um, But I think it's a fairly simple case. So the story begins like this. About 10 years ago, the ground that was uh, part of a 200 acre assemblage that was Rockwell Estates or planned to be Rockwell Estates was foreclosed on by a bank. Uh, I don't was, know. You, that was the 07 or 08 uh, yes, down, the downturn, downturn of Wall of Street, wasn't it? A lot of developers lost their so position. Because they built several homes in there. They did. Of, There's about 160 lots, uh, maybe off just a few. And most of those lots have been absorbed. I think there may be two or three or so vacant lots left. Um, but it took 
10 years for 46 lots, which I bought with some of the undeveloped land. It took 10 years for those 46 lots to be absorbed. So it was very slow, but that was in part because of the economy. Mm -hmm. Took a while to work through that inventory. And about a year, year and a half ago, it started to become feasible to consider, do we develop some more lots in that uh, subdivision? And from my discussions with some of the members of their board, and I attended uh, a couple of their board meetings over the years, uh, they would really like to have additional phases of Rockwell Estates. There's three phases there, but it's hard to finance uh, HOA to maintain the swimming pool, to maintain the clubhouse, to keep all the common areas mowed, with only 160 houses paying their HOA dues to finance all of that. And the neighbors work very hard to make it a nice uh, resident, uh, residential community. Uh, and I think it is a very nice residential community. Their houses on those vacant lots are just being finished now. And um, there has already been work done for future phases in terms of grading mm -hmm. and storm sewer infrastructure, mm -hmm. detention ponds, uh, sanitary sewers that's been extended across it. So it's a good place for additional phases to occur. This particular application is because there's two lots that front Bunshu Road, just on the south side of Bunshu Road. Uh, one of the areas, which is lot one in the planning, which um, I, I had a plan here to show, but it, it's really not important to see it. Um, it wasn't easily developed anyway because of its location adjacent to Bunshu Creek and some other topography that's there. So this wasn't gonna be part of that development anyway. And then they put a cell tower on part of the uh, area where there were gonna be some houses. And then the nine acre lot two is on the north side of Bunshu Creek and it would have been isolated from the rest of the community uh, quite a bit of distance because not only the creek, but there's kind of a rock bluff that drops down that physically okay. separates it from the rest of the community. Um, given the time that's likely to occur to absorb future phases, it's gonna be a long time in the future before those two lots would be developed for part of Rockwell Estates, if, if at all. And uh, beyond that, uh, I think it's helpful to some of the neighbors that are on the north side of Bunshu Road to have some larger lot estate residentials that sort of buffers their homes from Rockwell Estates, which has higher density. Uh, Rockwell Estates are six now. So um, this is positive for the neighbors. I've not received any contact from anyone uh, asking questions or complaining about it. I don't know if city staff has, but no one's called me. And uh, the reason that we're coming to you with a proposal to say, well, lot number three has no street frontage. I, I would assume this is a somewhat unusual request. But the answer to that is that in future development as that occurs, the access would be provided you know, through three connection points to the roads that are planned to be extended into that area. Uh, again, that'll be some years in the future. I would imagine that it's five or 10 years at least, probably longer because phase four of Rockwell Estates is directly to the east. And um, that is south of, of what lot three would be. So um, in general, we would anticipate someday, that would be my hope, we wanna keep that possibility open that lot three would be part of that development. And even if it's not, the future phases would also provide access with street stubs that uh, the city would typically require. Okay. Um, I'm glad to provide more information, but that may be all that you need for the purpose. Is Rockwell Estates, is that the one that's off of Jones Road and Bunchy? It is on the southeast corner of Jones and Bunchy Road. Okay, you and there's a bunch of Jones. houses up in there. Is that where you're talking about most on, of the development? On the north side, there's some very nice uh, uh, large lot homes that are on the north side of Bunchy Road. That's right. And then Timber Creek a subdivision. I'm going to guess that they're quarter acre lots. I could be wrong just by driving by. They're not, they're medium to large size. Oh, Timber lots. Creek. Is that the one Jim Pollard developed? Uh, he's involved in now. I don't know if he was the original developer or not, but he, he's working on it now. I know. I was thinking it was a little bit south of Bunchu on the east side of Jones, I think, where there's a development up in there. That's not Rockwell States. So is that. Yeah, the southeast corner of, of Bunchu and Jones Road. Okay, so this is a little further east of that. Well, uh, uh, I don't quite Mr. picture. Maybe I understand the confusion. So, but it doesn't. It doesn't. Really Rockwell mean Estates. It. It's a little bit south of Bunchu Road. Mr. Chairman, if you want to look at the the vicinity map, mm -hmm. 
you can see the dark area where the applicant's property is. Mm -hmm. On the left side here, that's uh, Rockwell Estates. Okay. And then north of Bunchu is uh, Timber Creek Ranch. And the area that uh, one of the photos. Oh, I see. It's down here on kind of the south end of where they show these lots. That's right. Uh, 800 and something or whatever it is. Are those proposed lots down there that weren't built yet? Developed? No, those are all, all have houses on them. Well, most of them do. There may so be a couple. So that's all that developed down there just west of what is now lot three. Is that correct? What you show is lot yes. three on here? Yes. They're down in here. This well, is, I'm, look, at, look at this. This yeah. is the photo of the site that yeah, shows I things. I see that. Okay. So the so Timber, is it called Timber Creek? That's Jim Pollard, right? I believe he was one of the original developers. So this one, okay. I think at one time in my, my, my uh, the Rogers family, at uh, one time I think owned that area over there where Rockwell Estates is at well, one time. Is there really any problem here that this looks like this? Is uh, uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much, yeah. It's, it's there's no problem. Myself. Yeah, I mean, I... Am I missing something? Well, it's got yes on all of them, I'd say, mm -hmm. as far well, as... Well, um... Is, is there any... Did you all get any calls or anything on this? No, actually, you didn't receive any calls on this case or the next one. Oh, okay, Fisher, Farmstead. Oh, that's the next one. We haven't looked at that one yet. Well, um, I don't see any issues here on this particular uh, case number. I mean, I to me, it's pretty well self-explanatory. Do I have? Uh, I guess the uh, we can uh, close the the public hearing here, and uh, we'll decide what we want to do here. So you all have. I to me, I see it as. Pretty much, what do you call it? I don't like these words, slam dunk, but it looks like to me it's uh, meets all their criteria of the city. So, do we have anyone here that wants to make a motion to approve this That's case number 19 999 16 2000 20301 East Bunchy Road? So moved, Mr. Chairman. Do I have a second? Second. All right. So now we'll do the vote on that. Gene Ogle? Vote yes. Tim Watkins? Yes. John Davies? Yes. And Robert Jones? Yes. So that has been approved. So case number 19-999-16, Beyond the Horizon LLC, a variance request to the lot frontage requirements for property at 2301 East Bunchy Road has been approved unanimously, four to zero. Okay, so I'll- I don't know about you guys, but I'm gonna take about five minutes. Okay, go ahead. Hit the head. Okay. Yeah, it's been a long meeting tonight, pretty much, hasn't it? Yeah, mention my name, get a good seat. <laughs> how's, the, how's your son doing? Dan's doing just fine. He's as a matter of fact, I think he's on his way to Florida right now. Oh, is he? <coughs> so he's doing he's fine? He's retired, isn't he? Yes, sir. No. Oh. They're heading to Florida, and I think next week, I think Ron is going down to join them. We've got, uh, we've got some grandchildren down there and some great-grandchildren great of mine, and then I've got another granddaughter that's over in uh, Tampa, so oh. they're all going to get together, I think, and Oh, nice. Send some money up to Disney World or whatever that is over there in Orlando. Send some money or spend some money. Spend well, both. both. <laughs> <laughs> I think they go Probably together. Both. <laughs> send some money for the ones that are going to go or something. Uh, huh? If I understand right, they tell me it's 125. Oh, it's I haven't. Yeah, I was really there. Like, I was there in 19. Let's see, we were there in what Disney it? Disneyland in, in Anaheim back in 90, 96. Our kids were little. 1996, uh, and it was. It seems like it was. Fifty dollars to get in or something. Ten yeah. of them going. That's over a thousand bucks. Yeah. One hundred twenty-five yeah. bucks a piece. It's going anyway, up a lot. If, if you think of it sometime when you see him, just say, "Tell him hello for me." I'll do it. Because we used to work pretty close together at the school district. I didn't oh, did know you? that. Yeah. I did not know 
For you, well, the for director you. of transportation and the director of athletics has to okay. be like this. Well, yeah. yeah. <laughs> oh, so you used to be the director of the transportation? Is that mm -hmm. what you said? I, I, oh. didn't, I didn't realize that. John. So yeah. I'll be done. I didn't know you're talking about the bus service. Is yeah, that what you're saying? We're, we're weren't we together in some JCs years, years ago? JC community. Uh, I don't know. It seems like I, 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 I've been trying to think where I'm. It seems like I've been aware of you for a long time, and I've trying to put together where. Huh. No, not the, the JCs. Just, no, that's, that's, you're not old enough for that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yeah, Probably we're older just than everybody. Oh, Bob. <laughs> but, but me, I'll only be 75 in October, and my wife will be 75 in You are his kids. August, she's the, she's the old lady, well. I don't say that usually around her. But oh, yeah. Well, I tell, that's why I tell my wife to be the old lady. <laughs> I, <laughs> she, October. <laughs> <laughs> that's right. Absolutely. Okay, so we have one more. That this has been approved. We got one more. I knew tonight would be a long night, but goodness. Well, I appreciate you all coming out. and We, got, we had enough for a quorum. Yeah, it's... Salam Stetzer, too. See him pretty often. Oh, do you? He's a nice guy. Okay, I guess we got. We're ready to start again? Are you ready? Yeah, I think so. All right, last on the, the, the agenda tonight is um, case number 19 999 17, and that's Fisher Farmstead LLC, a variance request to the minimum lot and flag lot requirements for property at 304. Four South Powell Road. So I guess we show the video here. Yeah, this applicant uh, seeks uh, three variances to divide this uh, roughly 29 acre lot into three, parcel into three lots. Lots one and two meet the city code requirements. The lot three is if you look at your drawing here is the large lot. It needs three variances. The first is the lot frontage. It has only basically 100 feet of street frontage. The four to one lot width to depth ratio, depth to width ratio, it's only 99 feet wide, wide but over 1,300 feet deep. And again, again, the creation of a flag lot. Okay, with this uh, application, I only have one video. It's pretty much the tree line along the section of the, of the road is uh, very, fairly heavy. As mentioned in the staff report, there's a, a house out there on the property that uh, it, this is where we park here that the uh, applicant is in the process of rehabbing so we're parked in the driveway of the house the, the house is on which lot is it on, is uh, it on it's not on this development no it, it's it's actually on, on a different lot but this is really the best vantage point it's I could get two, is there... lot two after they do the split and all that okay. yeah when it's after it's split yeah okay okay we're in front of this house uh, a okay. nice red brick house mm -hmm. directly across from the mobile home park here we're, we're going to be looking uh, south down the Powell okay. and across the street to the mobile home park. Okay. Oh, yeah. That's right from the where we parked the bus. Oh, gosh. It is. It's right north of you, isn't it? Yeah. And then up uh, north on uh, Powell Road, and we, we're, we're now looking on this general property again. And um, I'll come out here, and there's uh, again, much like the other property, there's a lot of uh, area that is farmed on this mm -hmm. large, larger, almost 20, 30 acre track. That's on, that's the, the whole, okay. It's all 30 acres, the whole piece, roughly. Okay. I yeah. Is, if you look at the uh, aerial photograph here, um, this field that we're looking at is this area up here in the northeast corner okay we're, we're down here about where the uh, 304 number is is where the house is okay. and we're looking to the northwest at this field and the property that the applicant is is, is generally down to the south of this south and west of this but it's similar in uh, appearance where the house is is actually uh, uh, one of the lots 
and uh, the fields are essentially the uh, most of the other lots. So the house was sitting on the house was sitting on thirty acres. Is that what? Uh, essentially, right now. Okay. Okay. All right. All right. So I guess we uh, end of the video, and I guess we will have our <laughs> next. I guess Mr. Pratt's going to. Uh, sure. Glad to represent. I agree with the staff reports. Very well prepared. Um, so a little color commentary, just to understand uh, perhaps what's happening. So I bought the property because I'm interested in the farm fields. I, I like the, the soybean fields and want that to continue. This house came with it uh, because it's not separately platted. And uh, so I bought it about 14, 15 months ago, had a tenant there, and they decided to move out, which was fine. They were on a month-to-month -month lease, and just as they were moving out, they knew someone that was looking for a place to live and they let them move in. It wasn't just one person, it was six or seven with a couple pit bulls and there's drug use, but long story short, three months later they're finally evicted and all the wirings have been pulled out and the air conditioning are stolen and the like. Oh my gosh. So because of its remote location, there's the trailer park to the east, but it's open land on the north, west and south. And so it's, it's difficult to observe what's happening in the home and in my view, this should not be a rental property. It's also a nice home. It's a good, solid brick home, two bedroom, one bath. Mm -hmm. It would be a lovely home for someone who wants to own it and care for it well. And I think it would enhance the quality of the neighborhood if this is not a rental property, but this is owner occupied. Mm -hmm. And sure. um, it needs to be on three acres. It's a septic system. It's not on sewer. Uh, mm -hmm. The long term future, and, and I want to stress this is really long term is for Jackson Drive to be extended way down from M78, crossing Truman Road, and all the way up the hill. But the city doesn't have funding for that. The city has committed to building Jackson Drive up to Truman, but then development would need to pay for the extension of Jackson Drive. So the development would start to the south, where there's also sewer access, and slowly make its way to the north, building the road as it goes. This is in the far northeast corner of all that open land. And so I don't think it's even going to be developed in my lifetime. And it would be a lovely place. The lot one is uh, a hilltop. It's mm -hmm. an eight acre hilltop, mm -hmm. beautiful views in three directions, maybe four directions. Um, there's no sewer there, so it would have to be single family home. But I think it would be a lovely place for someone to have their home. Mm -hmm. The three acre piece, it's a, it's a nice solid brick home. It also has a pond in the woods next to it mm -hmm. and would have a beautiful view looking to the west over the pond and over the open farmland. Mm -hmm. I think it's a mile to the next row when you go over all the fields and uh, mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a lovely setting. Mm -hmm. And then behind it uh, is a soybean field. Again, my interest is keeping the soybean field, most of that, and keeping it open. Um, and, and I'm not sure that um, we could even predict when that's going to be developed, but uh, I don't think any time. Is that part so. of the lot three? Is it? The yes, lot area? three is, is the large area that um, lot two, we've sort of drawn that in a fashion to exclude the farm field. So mm -hmm. lot two is where the house is, the woods, there's a small outbuilding or a barn and another small outbuilding and a pond. Mm -hmm. okay. So that fits well together. Um, and then lot one is a soybean field, could be a home site. Uh, beautiful location for that, and then lot three is essentially a soybean field. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Okay. Appreciate it, Mr. Pratt. Okay, we don't uh, don't see anybody else here. <laughs> no, no um, uh, opposition, so we can close this for the public hearing. And uh, once again, it's pretty well. Yes, one, two, three, four. No calls. Five, six. I'd say no this, calls in this case. I'd say this is a another no brainer here. Do I? I do, move we do we have a mo um, do we have a motion to approve case number nineteen dash nine 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 dash seventeen Visher Farmstead LLC a variance request to the minimum lot and flag lot requirements for property at three hundred one four South Powell Road. Mr. Chairman, I so move. Right. Do we have a second? Second. All right. So we'll do the vote here. 
Gene Ogle. Yes. Tim Watkins. Yes. John Davies. Yes. Robert Jones. Yes. So case number 19-999-17, Fisher Farmstead LLC, a variance request to the minimum lot and flag lot requirements for property at 304 and South Powell Road has been approved. All right. Now we're going to, we have to, I didn't look at them that close, but I think we're okay on the the minutes is uh, from the last meeting for the May the 16th. Uh, we can just do that by voice vote to approve the minute, the minutes from the last meeting on May the 16th. And we will do that by yay and nay, I guess. Those approve the minutes from the May the 16th, 2019 meeting, say yes. 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 Those opposed, no. The minutes have been approved. This is the end of the meeting. Thank you all for coming out. Appreciate it.